The following tutorial is meant to help students to complete the skateboard project in Tinkercad. Uh, shout out to Monty Works who shared this, this activity on Teachers Pay Teachers. I'll put the link in the video details below. If you are opening Tinkercad for the first time, I would start with a different tutorial. This one is going to assume that you understand some of the basic layout and functionality of Tinkercad and uh, this one will instead show you step by step how to create a simple skateboard. So we will get started by creating a new design and once we're in there it's always a good idea to go ahead and change the name of your file so you don't forget to do it later and we're going to start by dragging in a box from the basic shapes menu and there's a couple of, there's two different ways that really I use to resize objects. And that would be to either click and type in the number. Or uh, the other way is to click and drag. So depending on just what works for you is what you could use. The next thing we're going to do is to drag in this sphere here. We're going to reshape it to 27 by 27 and with a z-axis height of three. Once we have that, we're going to change our view a little bit just so we can kind of see the angle that we want to change. We're going to change it by 90 degrees. And once we do that, we are... Uh, something that I do just for 3D printing purposes is, in is increase the number of sides on the circle so it's a little smoother. <clears throat> the next thing we'll do is another box, bring it in. Now I'm typing that one in 13 and a half because I haven't seen a way to be able to drag and get that decimal uh, height of 27. Now here we're going to turn this into a hole so that when we eventually join these two shapes, uh, it will lead to a cut. So here we are aligning the shapes so that we get them exactly where we want. And once that is done, you can either click group or control G on the keyboard. We're going to then duplicate, which you can do by clicking there or control D. And once it's duplicated, we are going to mirror it across the X axis. Once we have that, we're going to select that one on the left. I like to just move it to get it uh, separated a little bit. And now we are going to then align it and you can hold shift and click on those two items or draw uh, a box around them to select Again, either L on the keyboard or click Align. Notice how I'm aligning those two shapes. Once that is done, the, uh, the, the board there has to be moved to the left 13 times. So we're moving along the X axis. So you can hit your uh, arrow key 13 times to the left and then select and group. So once you have grouped those two objects, now we need to work on the back piece there. We're going to change the angle of that piece to 30 degrees. And once we've changed the angle, we're going to go ahead and align those two pieces. And we want to line it up just like you see on the screen there. And then we need to move now again, but this time 12, 12 steps to the right. And once that is done, you can select all and group. Now, if you'll notice on mine, I don't know what quite was going on, but I have some some artifacts, some little remnants there on the on the left side. Uh, so I just ignored that because I could not figure that out. I don't know if it was just based on my computer or what. But now we are moving on to the next step of creating the wheels. So we'll start by bringing in a cylinder. We're going to size that cylinder to 12 by 12 with a height of four millimeters. Again, multiple different ways to resize objects. Then we're gonna bring in another cylinder and this time it's going to be six millimeters by six millimeters with a height of 27. And this step that we're going to be doing here, making the wheel assembly, 
uh, it's it's a multi step process. So if you if you need to pause it and rewind it, then do so. All right. After we've made those two pieces with the cylinder, we're gonna drag in a sphere and we're gonna resize that sphere to 10 by 10 with a height of seven millimeters. Before bringing in one last cylinder and this last cylinder is gonna end up a hole. So we'll resize that to eight by eight with a height of just two millimeters and then we will select hole now once we get to this point we're going to select all these objects here those four objects that we just made so that we can align them with by either clicking on align or hitting l on the keyboard we will align them as you see on the screen and then group check to make sure things look good from underneath there should be a space and there is so now we are actually going to duplicate and then we are going to mirror so we're creating two and then we are flipping them and now you can see the wheels actually start to take shape but something weird happens in Tinkercad when you do this and we lose that cutout space. So we're going to highlight everything, ungroup, and then simply regroup. Wish I could tell you why that's necessary, but I don't really know. So now we will start making the wheel holder. And for this, we're going to start with a box. We're going to resize it to 11 in the X direction, 8 in the Y direction, and 23 three for the Z direction or height and we'll bring in another cylinder and we will resize that to 11 by 11 with a height of 23. And the next step here is we are going to align those two objects. And once they are aligned, then we are going to move the cylinder in the negative Y direction. So we're going to select just a cylinder and hit down four times on the arrow keys and then group. And the next step is to create the hole for the axle to fit through for the wheel assembly. So we'll use another cylinder. We will resize to eight by eight with a height of 23. We will align those after selecting that as a whole. We will align them as you see on the screen. And before we group them, we're actually going to slightly move the wheel holder. And we're going to go ahead and move that up in the Y direction, a positive one, and then group. And now we have that object there that has a hole for the axle of the wheels to go into. Now the next step here is to kind of adjust the shape of the wheel holder that we just created and in order to do that we are going to use a cylinder again and we will resize that 24 in the x direction by 30 in the y direction with a height of 11 and we are then going to rotate that by 90 degrees. So I move my screen a little bit here just so I can see the proper uh, arrows for rotating. Get a different view, make sure things look good. And it does. So the next step here is to duplicate. And 
that duplicated piece, we are going to move up by 30 millimeters. So in order to do this, you are going to select it and then hold control and you can either hit the up arrow 30 times or you can hold shift and control and hit the up arrow key three times and then select both and group. And now you can select them both as a whole and then it is time to align those two cylinders with the wheel holder. I'm gonna go back into home view here and aligning those pieces. And before you finish, you'll actually select the wheel cutouts, those two whole cylinder pieces, and push the up arrow key one time. And then you are ready to group them. So once you have that done, you're going to group the wheel holder and the wheel assembly. And we'll align them. and then group. Now it's time to align the wheel assembly with the skateboard itself. Now notice that doesn't look right. So what we need to do is select the board and we are going to move it up in the Y direction, the positive Y direction nine times. And then we're going to move it to the right, so the positive X direction 19 times. Once that is done, we can select the wheel assembly and duplicate. And once it is duplicated, we are going to move it to the left to the negative x direction and in order to do that again you can either hit the left arrow key on your keyboard 50 times or hold down shift and push the arrow key five times And once everything looks like that, you can select all and group. Now you could be finished at this point, or you can flip it and place it onto the work plane on its wheels, which just kind of makes more sense. You got to turn it a little bit to find the right arrows to adjust the angle by 90 degrees. And once it's flipped, you can hit D on your keyboard to drop it to the work plane. And at this point, you could be done with your skateboard. Or if you would like to change the colors, you can ungroup and then individually select different colors for each of the parts of the skateboard. Because if you leave it grouped, it all changes to the same color. So you can see here, I'm just changing the colors just to make it look fancy. Uh, a quick note, if you do plan on 3D printing skateboard, uh, it's, it's gonna be a solid color based on whatever filament is being fed into the 3D printer. So setting the colors is really just for looks, uh, sp especially if you were to be exporting a picture. So I know in my class we'll make uh, products and you're going to want to export a picture to put into your marketing materials and obviously their colors uh, could make things look a lot nicer. Now I wanted to add a little bit something extra here to the skateboard. So what I'm doing is I'm selecting a work plane and you'll notice that I just put the work plane on top of the skateboard so that when I drag in another object like text 
it actually is aligned with the skateboard, the top of the skateboard. I don't have to place it on the the bottom work plane and then you know move it in the Z direction to f perfectly line up. So you can adjust the text however you want, change the color just like any other shape. I'm changing the height here, just enough to stand out if I'm to 3D print it. You can change the font as well if you wanted to do that. I guess I'll go ahead and change what the, the text is. Uh, one other thing I wanted to try is you'll notice I put a work plane on that back angled edge of the skateboard. And I, I, I just wanted to kind of play around with it and, and see what this scribble part was all about. Again, I'm kind of learning Tinkercad as we go. I'm new to it. Uh, so I just kind of put that in there, and I didn't really care what I was making. I just kind of wanted to see how that, how that worked. So I just drew a weird shape. And then placed it on there. And just like any other shape, again, you can change the dimensions of that shape. So when I 3D printed this, it didn't even really show up because I made the height so low. Uh, but just another another feature of Tinkercad that you can play around with if you were interested. Uh, really, I think the work plane tool here is quite useful for a lot of the things that you might be doing and is a good time saver when trying to line up two different objects. And that is the skateboard. Be sure to like and subscribe as I will be adding more Tinkercad tutorials.